Next question is from Lucy Brown 94 Any advice for refocusing your goals after moving away from team sports? Oh, good old team sports. Yeah. You know, clients who did this, who were athletes, and then they would come, like maybe like 10 years ago, and then they would hire a trainer. Mm -hmm. They were really hard to train. They're always hard to train. Very yeah. hard to train. They it, still have that athletic mentality. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this kind of hits home a little bit just because like, if you really identify as an athlete and it's something that like you have trained and gone through school and like you're just always in that in the mix of like i'm in the the off season i'm in in season and this is just like one of those things like it's, it's a really hard ritual to just all of a sudden give up and like turn course and now what do i do it's like it's this whole like kind of a it's, it's a tough moment where you have to kind of reinvent yourself uh because you've put placed so much of your identity uh in that direction so i totally get it well i think a lot of that has to do with in sports there's such a, a mental aspect right like and you've been rewarded for pushing beyond your limits in sports so if you're and it doesn't matter what sport name a sport any sport right yeah and you uh training to that next level and and overreaching all the time actually benefits you most of the time right unless you're doing something physically like weight training for your you sport. go crazy or whatever right but the the more you do of your sport the the better you get at your sport mm -hmm. and so it's it, so you've been rewarded for that mentality well when you're dealing with fat loss and muscle mm -hmm. building it's it's way more scientific and it's there's a lot more that's coming into play here and that same mentality doesn't reward you the same way no. and so it's really tough to make that switch of i know that the harder i push the more i do in sports the better i am at that sport that's not necessarily true with fat loss and building muscle yeah now you have to think more long term like that that inhibits your progress at a certain point right. that's what i had to figure out was like that train hard and, and leave it all in the gym kind of mentality. You just like your body changes over time too. And so to be able to, you know, look at this and, and see what's the healthiest thing for me and what, what do I really want to accomplish now sort of in the second half is, is, you know, like you have different priorities and you have to realize that like you have to train your body a different way uh, in order to benefit you uh, long term with this. So I love, Take and of course, there's. I, or I'm just assuming or guessing where this person is at, but I, most people that were athletes before they have this kind of high intensity, keep it moving type of mentality when they want to lift. And so I love taking them into like a strength phase with lots with long rest periods and mm -hmm. forcing the rest periods. I love a program like our Maps uh, Power Lift because of that because it's very structured. Yeah. It's got long rest periods in it. And it's still and, somewhat competitive. Yeah, exactly. So you're you're watching your weights go up and so I like they'll, they'll like that part of it. But then you got to really follow the structure of sitting there and resting for three minutes, which is like a lifetime for the athlete. The athlete who's used to running up and down the courts or up and down the field, constantly moving, constantly sweating like crazy. You may actually do these workouts and not hardly break a sweat. And that's really tough for them to realize that that can still be a great workout. Well, one of the, the biggest challenges that I encountered with people like this was they went from training for a, a particular competition or a goal to now I'm training just because I need to keep exercising and stay mm -hmm. healthy. So it's like, what am I training for? Right. right? Now, one of the reasons why I might not recommend maps power lift is because you might get the athlete who's then like, they're going to oh, sign up for meets. I'm going to compete. Of that. Yeah. Right. And, I, and it's that same mentality. Right. I'm still an athlete that's going to compete in power lifting. Here's the challenge. The challenge is, and this is a challenge for everybody. It's especially challenging with, um, with athletes is, you need to exercise for the sake of exercising. You need to enjoy mm -hmm. the workout for the sake of the workout, not necessarily because you're going to hit some target. Because if you continue to train your body with goals where like, I need to hit this number, I need to do this run. Because here's what I would see with these ex-athletes is they would sign up for a marathon. Yep. Or a triathlon, Muddy buddy or, or yeah. a bodybuilding show, yeah. or a, a powerlifting competition. Because yeah. they don't know how to train without a competition. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with competition, but athletes aren't the healthiest people in the world specifically because they're pushing their body to the limit. If you're, you know, done with that athletic period of your life um, and you just want to improve your health, 
you can't always do that. And there's nothing wrong for signing up for things here and there. But if you get caught up in that, you're going to hurt no. yourself. You're going to beat up you, your body. You can totally do it. You can totally reframe your workouts and, and uh, you know, go through those types of lifts where you're just doing it because it makes your body feel good. Yes. And, and you, you want to come back to it because it's it's something that's almost therapeutic. But, um, you, you know, you maintain a lot of the, the skills and a lot of the abilities and things by appropriately training your body. And this is why I really got into to mobility. And I really took that on with a competitive mentality because I knew that I wish I would have done all that stuff going into uh, sports because I would have been such a better athlete. But now it's like, I know it's going to benefit me because I'm going to feel good. I'm like, my joints are going to feel good. I'm going to wake up in the morning. I'm going to want to throw the ball to my kids. I'm going to want to get up and go for a hike. And, you know, I just want to do shit. Yeah. That's and, and your um, opinion is real important here, Justin, because I remember you telling me, because you, you went very high level with, with football. You competed, you were in college and you played it. And then I remember you saying after you finished college football, you actually had a long period where you didn't work out at all. Yeah. Almost you didn't want to. Yeah. What was the mentality? Like, wh Why did you say, no, I don't want to do this for, for a little while? Yeah, I think it was just that I had always lived in the gym and I was always doing the, the hardest lifts I could possibly do. There was no in between. Like I, I didn't really do it for those reasons, like to, to really help my body feel good or to even for aesthetic purposes. Like I didn't, I never had that mentality. It was always crush myself. Mm -hmm. And I just, I think I got to a point where I just was like, I crushed myself. Like I was done. <laughs> yeah. And so I just had to take a break and, um, it was a good break, but it also made me like miss it. And I was just like, I don't feel good. My body's like just doughy and, and gross. And like, I just, I was winded all the time and I was in pain and I'm just like, this isn't a way to live either. So yeah, yeah. you can be competitive still. You just got to be competitive about different stuff. Right. So yeah. instead of like uh, how much I'm lifting, how hard can I go? It's like, how consistent can I be with adding yoga into my routine? How consistent can I be with my diet yeah, and, com true. and compete with yourself to be better about this? I mean, I'm a wannabe athlete, right? So I, I didn't go play college basketball or anything like that, but I've played sports my whole life and I even played in adult leagues as I got older. And so I've always been that, like that, that mindset I totally identify with. And so there is some value to it. Like, I mean, the, any athlete at all, especially if you've reached higher levels, you've had to apply some serious discipline, competitiveness. Like, so you can do that. You just need to reframe it a little bit. It's you, you need to back off the intensity and hammering yourself mm -hmm. all the time and pushing that side of it and push the side of it with consistency right. and introducing things or challenging yourself, right? Athletes love to challenge themselves. So challenge yourself by ch doing a modality that you know is probably good for you, but you don't want to do. Like, like that's the challenge. Right. Like, so that, I mean, why I was so successful with my mobility journey the last couple of years is because I took that athletic mindset. Mm -hmm. I became competitive. Like mm -hmm. I could do this seven times a day. I'll get, and yeah. I knew that it wasn't going to hurt me to do mobility work seven times mm -hmm. a day. Now it, you know, initially when you do it, it's lame. It's not hard. I'm not really, you know, it's not like what I'm used to as a sport, but I took that, that mentality and I applied it to something that I knew would benefit my body and I was competitive with myself. So mm -hmm. there are some, some great attributes to that athletic mindset. You just need to reshift it. Yeah. Now there's yeah. one part that we're not talking about, which in my experience was the hardest part to deal with with athletes, which was diet. Oh, oh my God, was this hard with diet because... Because you're moving so much, you don't really have to account for it, you know, no big deal. Yeah, and it, they usually did the sport when they were in high school or college. So by the time they hire me, they're, you know, 10 years out of college, right? So they're in their 30s. So yeah, I was a competitive swimmer, uh, D1 or whatever, or I was a competitive basketball player in high school. And they remember how they looked. Oh, I was so fit when I did that. So yeah. I'm going to do what I did back then. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is they swim sometimes and they work out with me, but they're not really swimming twice a day or three times a day like they did in college. Yeah. They're also not walking around the college campus to classroom to classroom. And they're also not 20 years old. They're also 50, older. Yeah. 15,000 yeah. steps a day. And they just, and then yeah. they eat like crazy and they don't, and their, uh, their concept of appropriate portions is so skewed. I remember specifically, oh, yeah. there was this woman that I trained. And she was very, very high-level athlete in college. In fact, she was an alternate uh, for the World Cup for soccer at one point. So she's super high-level. And she's like, oh, it's crazy, Sal. She's like, I, I, I walk every day. I'm lifting with you twice a week, um, and I just can't get any leaner. And she's like, and, and I'm like, what are you eating? And she's telling me the foods. And I'm like, well, that sounds pretty good. And like, can you like send me a picture of like what you're eating? Mm -hmm. She sends me a picture. I'm like, how much do you think that chicken breast ways that you're showing me right there. 
She's like, I don't know, like five ounces. I'm like, put it on the scale. It's like a 12 ounce chicken breast. She's like, but this is what I used to eat. I'm like, okay. It's not like when you were, you know, doing double days in college and you were 20. So we had to like completely learn portion sizes because she was so used to eating these tremendous portion sizes as as an athlete. That I had to like get, and it took a while. It was really, well, really this hard. This is why you see in some of those professional sports realms, the life expectancy is really low, you know, like leaving because of their those types of habits. And, and you can't maintain that. Uh, but, it, you know, for some reason, like psychologically, uh, we still kind of maintain the, the, the plate, the portion sizes, yep. the, you know, it, it's just one of those things like – Food is it's just ingrained, uh, you know, we, we ritualize it so much that it just becomes like that's one of the hardest things to kick. Totally.